third frame is the, in this lesson, let's talk about optionals binding. What is that? Well, before we go into that, I just want to give you a, uh, a metaphor of optional, right? So often in time, I would love to, I would say to people that just think of optional just like a box, right? So someone give you a box and yay, I have a gift box, right? So think of optional as a box. And then when you inside this box, right, inside this box, there will be something, there will be some values, an integer, an string, anything that you want to use, a raw data type that you have, right? So in order to use that thing inside, in order to use that thing inside, you have to ungrab the optional. You have to ungrab the optional and you have that thing inside that you can take out and use it. You can call methods on that, you can access the properties of that thing. But if inside that is nil, meaning that there's nothing inside this box, when you open it and you want to use it, you'll be like, like there's like a bomb inside this and Swift doesn't allow you to do that. So that is the case. If the optional is nil, and you want to use it, you ungrab it, then your app will crash. So there are two situations, right? Again, optional is like a box. Inside the optional, there will be some value. If you want to use the value, you have to ungrab it. But if you ungrab it and the optional is nil, then your app will crash. So how can we prevent that? That is what we talk about with optional binding. It is a way for us to bind the values of the optional if the value exists. So let's talk about that in the next training, in the demo. <laughs> let's talk about a safe way to ungrab an optional in script. So I'm going to go over Xcode and create a new playground so that this one is different from the last one. And let's call this guy optional binding. Now don't worry, that is just a term, it is nothing, uh, nothing big over here. We'll talk all about that and click next. I will leave it there. And by the way, you can always download all of the resources, all of the lessons in the link right down below this page to click that and then you will have access to all of these lessons, okay? So here we go. Now, for example, I have a dictionary. So I have a dictionary. If you don't know about dictionary, it all means is that it's just like a dictionary in real life, right? So I have a book, a dictionary, and I want to find the meaning of a word. So in a dictionary in Swift, just like that, the word is called a key, and then the meaning of that word is called the value of that key. And then a dictionary is just like a book, a dictionary book like that. It has a bunch of key value pairs so i have a dictionary of states some of the states in the united states and then i want to denote that the type of this dictionary it has the key is a string of type string and then the value separated by a colon like this the type of the value is also a string and then close the bracket equals an initial value and then we have open and close brackets like this, square bracket, right? And then I will press enter so that we have some space to work on below there. Now, among these two spaces, we will put in these key value pairs. So the first one we have is, for example, I have CI and the value is California. California, like that, right? And then we have comma, so that I separate this guy, this key value pair from a different key value pair. I can continue to typing in like this. Oops, continue to typing in like this. PI is Pennsylvania, the last state that I live in. Pennsylvania, like this, right? And we can do it like this, but um, to make it better or easier for us to read, I'm going to press enter over here so that we have key value pairs like this. And let's have two other ones. So comma, enter, and I have WA is the state of Washington. I hope that I spelled right. And then we have MA is the state of Massachusetts. Massachusetts, like this. 
Pretty cool, huh? Now, if I want to access the values inside this state's dictionary, or I want to look up the value of certain keys, I will need to know what is, the uh, what is that key. So for example, I have let ci equals to state subscript ci like that. Okay, just like a dictionary, just like an array, we use the subscript syntax. But here, instead of having like a, an array, we have the index of that element that we want to access. We want to access the value at that CI key. So we have the CI inside the bracket. So it says California. But I doubt that it is California because if you look at the type of the CI, can you guess why the type of the CI? Because the va the key is a string and the value is a string. But what is the type of this CI? What is the type of this CI? All right, there's only one way that we can know. So let's hold the option key, click into the CI, and it is a string optional. Why is it a string optional? Why is it a string optional? Let's talk about another example. Let's PI about WI is equals state subscript WI like this. And it says Washington, but the title of this is not a string. It is a string optional. Hold the option key, click into the WI, and we have the string optional like this. Huh, that's weird. So it means that in order to use this thing, we have to unwrap it, right? So we in order we can print out the WI ungrab like this, and we will see that it is Washington. If we don't ungrab, it will be optional Washington. And we don't want that, right? Because if we put that on UI, on our screen, it will be optional. Watching them like this, that's weird. <laughs> so we ungrab it like this. But the problem is, and the reason why this thing is a string optional, not a, uh, not a string, is because this key, it may not exist in this dictionary at all. Because, for example, if I just mistyped this instead of WA capital, I have WA lowercase like that. And you will see that we have here nothing. And this thing is going to be nil, right? So let me delete this line over here. And you'll see this is nil. And if I ungrab that nil, it is going to crash the app. And it says fatal error, unexpectedly found nil while ungrabbing an optional, like that. So later on in your project, if you see this line, un uh, unexpectedly found nil while ungrabbing an optional, and then Xcode will highlight the line for you just like this, you gotta highlight right like this, and you have to find out why is it that it is nil? Should you ungrab it like this? Or um, another case is that you call a method on this object, but if that object is nil, it will also have this error, okay? I will put a comment here. If you call a method on a nil object, nil object, or a nil instance actually, instance, it will crash the app and you will receive the message error. The error message is this guy. Okay, so that you later on you refer to this, you can know that it is the error. Now, again, we cannot do this, so let's Let's use another way. We can do if wi is equals equals to nil, right? If it is equals to nil, we print out something like not found. Otherwise, we're going to ungrab it like this. Okay. Then you see that every time we use this is kind of like troublesome. So let's use a different way, and that way to ungrab a thing faster and safer is we call it optional uh, binding. So here's what I mean. I'm going to use if let, okay, if let, um, how about, let's say, uh, what's that? We have MA. So if let MA equals to state subscript MA, like this. And then inside here, I can use print MA. So inside here, I can print this let, if let, Am I like that? And you say is that you have Massachusetts, but look at the type of this am I. 
Hold Option key, click to that, and it is a string, not a string optional. The reason why is behind the scene, under the hood of the syntax, Swift did this for you. Okay, Swift did this for you. So only means is that, okay, number one, step number one, it accepts the MA key value pairs of the state's dictionary, and then it has some value, optional. And then it will ungrab somehow like this, and then it will assign to the value of MA to be a string, Okay, and then it goes into this. If this thing is not nil, but if it is nil, then it goes over here. So we can print something else. Okay, just so that you know that it goes, it can goes to the else clause like this. So if I say am I, I like that, it goes into f not found. You see this? Not found. But we can or we um we you can um, not use this, and it still works. Now, one another t thing I want to note though is that this MA let's property over here it is only exist in the scope of this clause, this if let's clause. So if you use MA outside of this, MA, it will not exist. It will have an error. So let me run the thing, and it will have an error somehow like this. You okay, can see an use of unresolved identifier because this thing is all exist inside this. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so that, my friend, is how you use optional binding. I know it's just setting the stage, but in the code challenge below this video, you find out all about optional binding. We'll talk more about optional binding. So download the code challenge document below this video and do your code challenge uh, on optional binding. And you have so much more understanding of optional binding. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoy optional binding. It should open up a lot of doors for you to understand about optional. So I hope that you enjoyed this lesson again. Please let me know in the comment section if you have any questions at all. I would love to answer all of your questions. Next lesson, we'll talk about this concept called optional chaining. Why is that? Well, a, a lot of time in your object, right? For example, you create this object and then in that object you have a property and then that property is another object. So let's talk about something simpler like a child and a state. In the beginning of this lesson, I, I told you that optional is like a box, right? Optional is like a box. And within that box, there's some values that you have to ungrab to use it, right? So imagine that this is an optional, an object, and you use optional binding to ungrab it, right? So you use optional binding, and inside that, there's another box. Ah, there's another box that you have to use. And you want to use something inside here too. So again, you have to use optional binding. And then inside here, there's another thing, imaginary. And then if you want to use it, you have to ungrab that and use optional binding again. Well, that process is kind of like really tedious. All we want to do is accept the final thing in that third box without having to use all of those bunch of option binding. How we can do that? That is what we talk about in the next lesson. Optional chaining. I see you in the next one.